What a wonderful thing it is to welcome you all here, um, to welcome people that have been working on this project for, for many years, as well as um, so many kids and, and families that we know are going to enjoy this um, for, for years to come. You know, in my time as mayor, I've gotten to work on many great projects working with the community. We've opened major projects of all sorts, from roundabouts to roads to new housing, train stations, transit stations, and a number of new parks, uh, including the new frame landmark on the waterfront. And each of these efforts has their own challenges and rewarding moments and serves the community in different ways. Uh, but there is nothing more fun and hopeful as days like today when we get to open a new playground. Um, we've done this, this is the, the seventh new playground over the last decade. And this is not just any playground. The new Oak Ledge Universally Accessible Playground, this opening is a particularly joyful day. As we see, <laughs> this is a project that was... <laughs> This is a project that was driven by the vision and the collaboration of this community. And as a result, it is the first of our playgrounds to be designed from the ground up to be universally accessible for kids and families, for all kids and families. Thanks to the early advocacy of parents and neighbors, broad community engagement and participation, careful design, and creative problem solving, this playground is safe and inc an inclusive space where people of all abilities can play and explore together. I am especially grateful to Oak Ledge for All, who we're going to hear from in a moment, which has been incredible through this process. I'm very thankful to the Parks Foundation as well for their unwavering commitment to seeing this project through, despite many setbacks and challenges. And we see have the head of the Parks Foundation here as well. Brooke, thank you for being here. We're killing. Um, and I want to thank the parks team that has, uh, parks, recreation, and waterfront team that has worked so hard on this project over many years as well. The first, uh, and you know, if you're on the parks team, raise your hand. We got Cindy, John Adams Collins, Sophie. It's been a great effort. The first first uh, beginnings of this project were over a decade ago in 2010 and this team has stuck with it and made, made it sure we got to today. We hope that the lessons that we've learned together through this project as well as the joy that it is already bringing to Burlington kids and the region's kids will inspire other communities across the state to prioritize equity and inclusivity in the design of their own public spaces. I know that with this new playground the accessible treehouse that we've been fortunate to have here on the other side of this park for many years, um, as well as the new universal beach access that's just behind me, Oak Ledge will become a destination for families from around the region and really around Vermont because of the unique experience it offers. Together, these projects show the power of great collaboration and Burlington's commitment to being a place where everyone lives in a place and everyone who visits here is valued and belongs. With that, I am honored to introduce Julia Wayne from Oak Ledge for All. Truly, without the energy and enthusiasm of parents and neighbors of Oak Ledge for All, this exciting project would not have happened. So, Julia, welcome. Hi, everyone. I would like to welcome uh, the OFA committee members, Oak Ledge for All committee members, up with me because I don't think I should be the one to be up here alone. <laughs> yes, yes. You and all, the people from, we started this project 10 years ago, so we've had many different amazing people along the way. And some of them are here today with us. Liz, I see you. You're under our orange tent. She's manning the tent for us. Um, so I'm Julia, um, and on behalf of Oak Ledge for All, <laughs> thank you so much for being here today. 
Um, after 10 years of creating a vision to make an accessible playground in Burlington, one that provides equal opportunities to play for people with disabilities, we are finally here. It took the courage and commitment of many community members, advocates, and champions to make this possible. We are also appreciative of our longtime partnership with Burlington Parks Recreation and Waterfront and their vendors, as well as all of the friends and families that have shared their expertise, experiences, time, and love. And thank you to our many generous donors along the way. So, to truly take apart the traditional playground concept and reinvent it so that as many people as possible can have fun, make friends, and get some healthy play outside in our community spaces, spaces is a paradigm shift. So often, the greatest barrier to people with disabilities is not one's own ability or limitations, but simply having access to opportunities. And it takes a lot of good work, understanding, and imagination to create spaces that are intentionally accessible, where play features themselves are designed to be enjoyed by as many users as possible. Here's to making a dream possible and making our world a better place for everyone that we care about, one playground at a time. With that said, every project has its learning moments. Uh, this playground is still a work in progress as we are working to improve access to the slide. Please scan our QR code. You can find a QR code at all of the tables. Um, and please give feedback on how this space feels to you and how it might be better. Good, thanks Manny. <laughs> he loves it. We have come a long way, and in order to keep improving, community input is so valuable. A big thanks to the Parks Foundation. Parks Foundation! Yes. <laughs> yes. They have been our fiscal sponsor for many, many years. So thank you, big thanks to the, Park, to the Parks Foundation. They have an exciting announcement today to make a new project for continuing what we started here at Oak Ledge. One playground is not enough, and the Parks Foundation is launching a fundraising campaign to improve the accessibility of other playgrounds throughout Burlington. Okay, so we hope that you can lend them your support. Starting with a raffle that we have today, so under the orange tent, we have things to raffle off today. Um, but they'll be speaking in a minute to tell you more about that. So, we will now hand the mic to John Adams Colt, City of Burlington Parks Project Manager, and our longest standing partner of over eight years on the team, who we love very much. Without John as our champion, as well as his team, we would not be here celebrating today. attention to me to attention to Julia who uh, we would not be here without uh, who 10 years ago came knocking on the door of the parks department and said hey do you want to build a universally accessible playground and we said um, kind of what um, and over the course of the next couple years we got uh, we got our ducks in a row we did a, uh, a comprehensive plan for the whole department uh, they said build a universally accessible playground. Uh, we, we did a siting study for this particular park, Oak Ledge, and that siting study said build the playground in this location. And uh, from there, we set off and uh, put together a team that could design and build uh, this playground, uh, of course, with lots of input from the community and lots of input from stakeholders uh, that Julia Wayne brought to the table. Um, so we did have a lot of uh, community input uh, and a lot of uh, real deep creativity and commitment to play from our landscape architecture team. Uh, brand new design of Somerville, Massachusetts. Unfortunately, they were here for an hour at the beginning of the afternoon, but had to go uh, had to go back home to take care of the kids. Um, 
but they were instrumental in putting together uh, the design of this playground. They really are, are uh, visionary and really well known and becoming more well known for their design of playgrounds. And as Julia said, um, we're always looking to make them better and they are helping us uh, work out some details with the slide to uh, increase its accessibility to uh, some of the participants. I uh, also want to thank uh, the greater team that it takes to build a project like this. Uh, I believe I see Ben from ECI over at the base of the stairs. Um, we had an incredible contractor working on this project. Uh, they really, um, they really got it and really paid attention to all the details. And uh, happy to say, when I would come here in the morning, they would have uh, slid down the slide or tried out another piece of equipment. Um, they weren't shy about that. We also had resident engineers uh, keeping an eye on everything, and uh, they were a crucial part of the team. And I don't know if anyone knows that uh, Oak Ledge Park has an angel. Is that the um, best way to go down it? Yeah! <laughs> but Alicia, who's over there under a white cedar tree, uh, is the angel of Oak Ledge and kept an eye on all of the construction, got to know all of the, uh, the crew members and brought them treats and all sorts of great stuff. Uh, and, of course, we can't, uh, we can't build something like this without money. Uh, so I want to talk a little bit about uh, the sources of funding that I took to build this project. Um, it's not a normal project. It may not look super expensive, but it was super expensive. Um, Penny for Parks, of course, is our reliable source of uh, funding for uh, playground improvements. They got us started. Uh, the city's bond, the land, water, and conservation fund, uh, federal money managed by the state of Vermont, the building communities grant from the state of Vermont, and finally, finally the Dana and Christopher Reeve Foundation, um, who helped pay for the slide. You'll see their stickers on the slide that we just put there this morning. Um, we also wouldn't be, uh, we wouldn't be here today without the city's larger team uh, and their support, including, of course, uh, Parks Director Cindy White behind me, uh, the Mayor, Murrow Weinberger, who for many years has uh, really supported this, this project and I think wanted to see this day uh, happen, and I'm happy it happened uh, before uh, we say goodbye to you. And lastly, I hope the kids are getting ready to line up behind me because we're going to smash through a piece of paper, calling all children. Almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Oh, thanks. Um, all right, before we... Hi, how you doing? Um, we have one more person to hear from, and that is uh, Brooke Gilman of the Parks Foundation. One awesome thing that happened uh, during the end of this project is the Parks Foundation came on board and we developed... Uh, I know you really want to slide. So do I. Um, and we developed this plan for uh, initially five years and five playgrounds, but it really is going to go on forever. Uh, Brooke, you want to come up and uh, tell folks about that? Uh, they've already raised... A bunch of money for uh, Pomeroy, which is our first playground that we're going to undertake. And I will let you do I'll speak quickly. All right, I'm between joy and a little bit of information for all of you. So hi, everyone. Can you do it all? Hi, everyone. I am Brooke Gilman, and I am the current chair of the Parks Foundation for Burlington. Thank you, everyone, for joining today. This is incredibly exciting. And before I make my remarks, I first want to acknowledge all of the current and past Parks Foundation board members. Please raise your hand. There's a lot of them here. Yes, a lot of depth of support. Thank you all. Thank you. All right, so the Park Foundation of Burlington, it's a 501c3 nonprofit organization. We were established 10 years ago to support 
our great city of Burlington's park assets as well as recreation programming. And um, it's with this mission that, and our operating with a full volunteer-based board, that we support our parks either directly through fundraising or in instances such as today as the fiscal agent and sponsor for truly inspirational and transformational efforts that community-based groups like Oak Ledge for All bring forward and want to contribute to the city. So essentially, we can act as the fiscal agent to uh, help facilitate that when other community-based groups want to get involved in bringing wonderful things to our community. So thank you again, Oak Ledge for All. I'm going to thank you many times, but that's the first. Um, and so, but it's with that, that inspired by what has happened here at Oak Ledge for All and where we are today and seeing this amazing uh, joy and play, that we are excited to announce that we are establishing a Playgrounds for All, Playgrounds Forever fund that with the mission to raise funds to make all playgrounds in Burlington universally accessible forever. need to replace playgrounds currently. Many of our city's playgrounds have been removed. You may wonder why there's not many playgrounds left at certain key city parks, like Letty would be a great example of that, um, but there are others, and many are also on target to be removed because playgrounds have a life cycle, and you know you can't have broken play structures and, and the risk of, of injury and such. And so together with the funding that the city has already put forward through the Pennies for Parks and the commitment that the city is making to our playgrounds, we have a goal to raise $1 million, $1 million, $1 million to support the next five playgrounds, but with that, we can't stop there because that still doesn't solve all of the needs. And so that's why this is a Playgrounds for All, Playgrounds Forever fund. So our goal is to raise the first $1 million to support the next five playgrounds and then beyond that to keep going and going and going until all city playgrounds are universally accessible. Today, I am excited. People have already, John and others, have announced that we have some good news to share. And I am excited to be able to share with you that we have already raised over $130,000 towards this goal. So it's a, it's a great start, and we are forever thankful to those that have, have helped to kickstart this incredibly um, inspirational and transformational goal. Um, the first $130,000 together with the funds from the city will go a long ways towards building that first next park that it will be accessible at Pomeroy Park in the um, Old North End. Um, and that's going to be a reality hopefully within the next year, plus or minus. Yeah, <laughs> plus or minus project work, of course. Um, and so today I want to thank our key lead donors that believed in the vision for accessibility and inclusivity with our children and with play. And um, thank you in particular to Pat Robbins and Lisa Schomburg. Thank you also to Lisa Steele. Thank you to Sarah Meiskins and Michael Green and family. And thank you to the Odie family. And with the support of these amazing donors, as well as the rest of the Parks Foundation board and support that that board has given through donations as well, we are a long way to our you know first playground, and we feel like we're off to an amazing start and are confident in our ability to move forward to continue raising more funds to make, make this a reality all throughout the city. So we welcome the whole community to get involved in this, whether just through spreading the good word, directly fundraising, donating, or um, through advice and knowledge and information sharing of how we can make the playgrounds more accessible and, and improve and, and make improvements even from where we are today. So we have some community stakeholders and partners, Oak Ledge for All being the most important. So thank you again to Oak Ledge for All for not only just inspiring, but helping us in this path forward as a key partner. And we will have other partners as well, such as Ramon Adaptive and other community stakeholders that have a key to advise us in this effort. Um, and so with that, you can go to the Parks Foundation, uh, uh, Parks Foundation of Burlington's website for more information and how you can get involved. And I just again want to thank Oak Ledge for All and the team at Burlington Parks and Recreation Waterfront 
for all of their support and for inspiring not just today, but what will come tomorrow. So thank you all. Let's keep going and let's keep playing together. All right, now we get to go to the exciting background, but the kids, if you want to start gathering down here, Right up, right before, right over the line up, right behind there. And in just one housekeeping item, we um, raised uh, the three amazing cakes today so that we can celebrate. We're really trying to be um, oh, uh, aware of allergies. So the cakes that are on the left table are gluten-free, and then we have treats on the other table that do have gluten in them. So please right, just be, be aware. If you take cake from the gluten table or you take something from the non-gluten table, it's really important that you don't mix them because uh, there may be some children and adult here with real allergies. So again, just being aware um, with your allergies when you enjoy some beautiful Okay. And we, I think we're ready. Let's get a few more kids here. If anybody else wants to join in, any more kids that want to come in? All right, we're going to do a five-second countdown. Are you guys ready? Yes! Are you ready? Yes! All right. Yes! Five, four, 